Hey guys, it's Wally with Beach River Landscapes. Wanted to bring you another video enclosed trailer um, setup. Um, never told you guys what I drive. It's a 2009 um, HD three quarter ton with a Vortec in it. Wanted the diesel. I'm a diesel head, but um, I just I couldn't really afford the money for a diesel at the time. Next truck hopefully will be a diesel. Um, it's a powerful machine, 150 something thousand miles on it. Um, it still performs and acts like it's new. Always get a four wheel drive just because in landscape you never know what you're gonna come across. And I've used this thing already so many times. Um, so I never drive a two wheel drive. That's just me personally. I, I, you know, hardly anybody around here uses four wheel drive um, trucks in landscape, um, but I, I always do. Um, so again, this is a, um, this is the uh, look, which is made by Pace Element Edition with the charcoal gray paint. That's what the Element Edition gives you. Um, so things that I've changed is last time, or the first video I did, I talked about wishing that they, I could find a three quarter inch, um, uh, you know, full wrap around for this instead of just the right angle. And Home Depot finally started carrying it by, by my house. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh crap, I grabbed that came home and I swapped it out now that whole little end cap is fully protected there um, and I took the right angle that was there and I set it at the base of the door here um, you know it's obviously inside the trailer but they don't put one out here at the base of the door so I put one at the base of the door um, because it's a really good spot for it so um, get on the you know I touched on the light last time the little light bar that I put in here it's a plastic light bar I had a metal one but the metal one just kept breaking anytime it touched a branch or something when I would turn around I think the plastic one has been doing good because, you know, there's some give and flex to it, you know, when something pushes it. Um, and how I have this wired up is, uh, I pointed it out last time, but um, you have a switch just right here. You know, I push down, you know, for on um, and up for off. Um, I didn't wire it to the ignition just because I just didn't want any problems or tapping in, you know, really to anything that, you know, is, is, is stock in, in factory. So um, it, it's very simple. The light has a ground underneath it that I use to self-tapping screws into the frame. Um, it runs up underneath the bar. It goes into that little switch. I drilled a hole and just put that um, you know, self-tightening um, switch in there and then ran a line to the battery. It's very, very simple. I'm no electrician. It took me about 20 minutes to probably do that. Um, move the uh, ladders around. I, I flip-flopped them because I caught a couple big ones. And, um, you know, thanks for the tip because um, I don't know why I was having such a hard time. Um, I had them both running the same way. I was like, crap, man, my deck's going to hit when I pull in because I like to pull the deck, uh, the mower up over here on the side, you know, close. That way I have room to walk. So um, I inverted, you know, those. So uh, that works out good. I still keep the, uh, I raised, the pole saw was actually right here, but I ended up shifting it up there. So um, that's all lined up, you know, pretty well. And the, the you know, everything's easy to get in and out. You know, of course, when we have a 7 by 16 trailer, you know, you could use like an 8 by 20 you know, doing the amount of work, you know, that we do in the type of work. But 7 by 16 is good. It just gets a little tight when you're putting a bunch of stuff in here. So that's why organization really is the key. Um, so I said I was getting the green touch racks, and uh, they finally came in yesterday. These things are beastly, man. They're just, they're beast of racks, dude. It's just, um, it's worth the money. I paid 250 bucks, got it from Northern Tool. Um, I should have paid to have the two-day shipping for 40 extra bucks. It would have been worth it instead of waiting two weeks. But anyway, they came in. Um, my dealer, you know, we talked about it here at Northern Tool. And, um, they had no idea about these things, so they're actually going to start carrying them because I told them how amazing they are. We opened the box and went through it, you know, at the store when I picked them up. They were, like, crapping, like, how sick these things were. They had no idea because they're like, oh, we got some weed eater racks. Why didn't you buy those? I just started laughing. I was just like, dude, you, you got to check these things out. So they're actually going to start carrying, like, two or three of these in stock at a time. So um, I would encourage you guys to, like, maybe talk to your northern tool reps and, and you know, talk to them because – uh, these things have been out for a while, but I just learned about these racks um, a couple months ago. So um, I'm really stoked about it. And if I would have known about them a long time ago or longer, I mean, you know, farther back, I would have gotten them farther back. Um, so, you know, I couldn't find anybody to really touch on enclosed trailers with these things, um, except uh, one other video, really. Um, so, again, obviously, it's made for inside and outside. We mount it inside. You can take this um, you can take this L bracket right here, this wall mount bracket, and you can have the short side against the wall or this longer side against the wall. Shorter side brings the rack closer to the wall, obviously. Um, you can see you know, how much space you get. I couldn't imagine using the short side against the wall. You'd end up you know, probably there instead of like here. So um, the main reason I did that was um, so I could get the blower, uh, the blower hand, the blower arms behind it. 
Um, so again, on the, on this rack, it's, it's so dope, man. This rack's sick. I'm going to end up adding probably a two or three position rack, um, right there. I'm gonna leave that space open just for that. Um, you know, we're doing some, uh, commercial properties, um, and, and one's, you know, about a 40 building, you know, uh, apartment complex. So, you know, sticks are important to have. I usually only run about three weed eaters, one edger and a couple sets of shears. I know that I'm short on the shear side and that's actually a short, um, shaft shear. I need a longer set with articulating head and then some smaller handheld ones. I'll end up adding those, maybe pop those up underneath the compressor right there. So I'm, I'm leaving certain spaces in here for a reason, um, because I'm, you know, by the end of the year, I think I'm going to end up picking up a couple more condos. So, um, I'm going to, you know, really try and utilize this trailer. And then I, and I want to set a standard, you know, for how the next trailer is set up, um, you know, rebuilding the business, you know, used to run three trucks and, um, I've never been this organized, man. So like I'm, I'm taking, you know, a lot of things like, you know, Ambrose and B&B &B, and a lot of you guys are really putting some really awesome videos out there. I never used to look at YouTube videos, you know, for landscape stuff ever. Um, so once I, you know, got in that spot and had to restart everything all over again, um, you know, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I did in, in ways, you know, I'm finding, you know, some really great opportunities to organize things and, and set, set, you know, you set different standards and, um, so it's, it's, it's really fun actually to kind of get in here and do all this stuff. Um, but again, on this, um, weed eater rack, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with it, um, you can turn that latch up there and it will keep all of the pieces from coming out and you can push this in and it will lock them. And it is pertinent to it. I mean, it's just as relevant on an enclosed trailer to have such security for your weed eaters and, and, and things like that as it is an, an open trailer. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the backyard or my guys have been in the backyard and some jackwad just walks right up in here after studying what you're doing and just pops in here and, and grabs weed eaters that are sitting on the floor or something. So no more of that stuff, man. So this is in here when the doors are open. Um, you know, if there's guys with me, they'll all temporarily have keys to everything. They can unlock or, you know, unlock or lock things as they need it. If we're going, especially doing like big, you know, properties where we're away for 30 or 45 minutes from the property, you know, so we can lock things up, you know, just an extra added, you know, deterrent for people to walk in here. Um, so anyway, this latch right here will keep, um, you know, will keep the gate closed. You know, right now it's open. So you can, you just push this open, you can slide that out. Um, and the whole thing will just, um, it slides out of a tongue or, you know, kind of like a little tongue right there. Um, so definitely like a, I mean, this is definitely like a really sick weed eater rack and, and trimmer rack. Um, so I keep the, and, and I did hear that uh, it was a pain in the butt with an edger and now I see why. Um, the edger, I ended up having to reverse. You can put these, um, tongue locks anywhere you want. Um, they just slide in and the locking mechanisms actually back here, but it obviously, you know, keeps the distance, you know, the distance and that tongue right there locks the whole thing in. Um, but it, it is a pain cause it shoves that right up against the wall almost. So basically like I had to, I had to position everything to fit on a certain rack and it's only because I got my uh, blower arms behind it, you know, on little hangers. Um, but I like to keep everything really organized. So the edger is going to stay on the bottom and then those weed eater, I'm going to end up numbering everything. Um, so, you know, putting really nice kind of like stickers that way everybody knows where everything goes. I got another, I got, um, yeah, I got two new, uh, 100s. Um, and then my, you know, my edger's still kicking butt. Um, that's two years old, man. I mean, I tried painting them, you know, like a, you know, Jaguar teal color to go with the, with the stuff that didn't work out. But, um, any case, I mean, I take care of my stuff, so it still runs and acts like it's brand new. It's two years old. Um, and you know, that's, that's really the primary reason for me getting in this rack is to have everything upright. Um, I got the motor, um, mount supports on the way I ordered those today. I said, screw it. 55 extra bucks. Um, so I went ahead and ordered those. They'll be in here. They'll be in here in a few days and I'll end up putting it up that way. It has a support underneath, um, you know, each motor. Um, so for now I keep these shears up here because I drove around the neighborhood and they don't bounce off or anything. So, um, they seem to stick pretty well. It's cause this lock, this, um, uh, you know, this like tumbler up here keeps it in spot, you know, so it doesn't go anywhere. My neighbor's borrowing my other weed eater. I mean, not neighbor. I have a client that's got a lot of property. So I'm letting him borrow my other weed eater for now. So, um, when he, you know, when I get it back after the weekend, I'll pop it back in here. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I do usually just run three weed eaters and edger, and then I'll run a couple of shears. Um, and, and I'm going to move those over there. So, um, in any case, so I have that added. Um, I got these blowers. I'm going to end up doing a review on them, but I'll tell you right now, um, these blowers are, are amazing, man. They're, they're really, 
and it's not because I just got them because I mean I, I went to buy four blowers I could have bought any blower um, I sat there went through the 600s um, I read everything on the newer the 700 or something that's coming out my steel um, and here's the thing I'll tell you without getting into a big review um, I recommend if you're doing large properties um, like I said I'm doing condos and stuff and I got residential um, but if you got large properties I recommend these all day long man it's like having a, a, a street blower on your back now you know the the nozzles you know they're bigger than the steels um you know they're massive but it, it doesn't whenever you're like kind of blowing yourself off you know it doesn't you don't feel that that um that linear you know airflow like you do on the steels you know where it's like you know blows your you know sunglasses or you blows your hat and your sunglasses right off if you get close you know kind of like a laser beam this is more of a broad thing um i mean i guess the best way to explain it is you have two guys uh, you know, you have a linebacker and, you know, you have, I mean, a, a wide receiver, you know, it's like you have one guy that's, that's stockier, um, and one guy that's leaner. It's kind of the difference. Um, this is like the stocky broad blower versus the leaner, um, blower. Um, you know, the steel, I love them. They're great. I was looking to, you know, keep my options open. Um, for doing all these larger commercial properties and hands down I got to give it to the Husqvarna 580 BTS they're blowing machines man they um, I, they let me I took out my local guy here is really cool so he let me take out a, a brand new 600 you know for about two days and um, after I you know I demoed one of these too and, and I'm, if you're doing by yourself because these are bigger um, they definitely feel bigger, but they have harnesses that go across the top and the bottom, which is awesome, man. So it really takes all the weight off of you almost. Um, and steel needs to step up their game when it comes to um, the straps because their strap game sucks. Um, the straps always break um, and all that stuff. So um, straps, this thing wins. Um, as far as like being by yourself, like I'm still by myself. I just use my guys on my big properties. Um, but when you're by yourself, I think the 600, if you're by yourself for a while, might be a little bit better for you because it's easier to tote around. Um, it's just easier to maneuver the ergonomics on the handle steel wins. As far as that goes, the ergonomics on this is, is not as comfortable as a steel. Um, but I like the way that you can, and there, the switches, when you switch it on and off, like the steel spring loaded, this actually, if you turn it in the off position, it stays. If you forget, you're like, why is the blower not starting up? Um, ergonomics on the handle steel's got it. But as far as broad overall, like distance power blowing, um, this kicks its butt. So I'm, and people are going to disagree with me and all that. You can't all you want. I'm just going to tell you I'm in Florida, Jacksonville. It's, it's windy every single day, all day long. And I'm going to tell you right now that it's not an opinion. It's a matter of fact for me and the properties that I do in the city that I'm in, this literally blows away a 600 all day long. So if anybody's in the you know market for changing, cause I'm a steel freak, man. I love steel, but um, you know, these are so much solid. There's no bouncing around. There's no clanging. Um, they're actually, and I know that uh, these put out more decimals um, as far as noise, but I can tell you that the way that it distributes the noise, something's different because it's less loud in your ears than the steel is. Um, so I'm excited about the blowers. The only, another thing is, 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 it does take a minute. Like when I first, you know, started running them, I'm like, oh, these are fat. But man, I'm not so impressed. They're powerful. But after about two or three days, it literally, um, they need to break in. And nobody tells you that. Maybe nobody notices it, but I'm very meticulous on every single thing. And um, these things have to break in for a couple days. And then they're just, um, there's nothing, there's nothing like them. Like I said, it's like having a street blower on your back. These things are sick. So enough rambling on about that. So uh, again, here's the rack. Um, it's sick. Get one. A um, couple of new weed eaters. Um, and like I said, I like to, um, you know, I kick this over to the left because I really like to, um, you know, keep some distance so I can fit through everything. Um, the mowers have been running really sick, like I said last time. And and I noticed somebody said something on some guy's uh, channel, and he's just like, hey, those... Um, those you know mowers and your trailers too clean it's too clean for lawn work you must not do any work um i mean i got five guys running in and out of here and you know we do plenty of work you know what i'm saying and it and, and that's just kind of a 
I don't know. That's kind of a bullcrap statement, man. You set a standard is what you do as a business owner, period. My standard never used to be this, you know, this clean. Uh, but just because we work in dirt doesn't mean we have to be dirty. Um, I used to have my guys, man, used to stack and I used you know, three trailers and they used to just stack palm fronds and things. There's cockroaches flying everywhere. It's disgusting, dude. I'd get so pissed all the time. Um, I mean, that that whole thing starting over, like everything is going to be different now. Um, there, there's, there's no debris going inside my enclosed trailer. You know, I work things out with my clients where the city picks things up. So I do things for free. And that's another, that's a little tip. Like, you know, I'll trim things and all that stuff and I'll do it for free. And I don't mind. It only takes me a minute, but I leave the debris for the city to pick up. Um, because we do too much work to, to try and carry all that stuff. You know, eventually whenever I, um, you know, get a different, or I add a different truck and, and I put, you know, like a dump gate, you know, instead of a bed on the truck, then I'll start carrying debris and all that. But for now, uh, then I'll minimally carry debris and it'll go in the back or like on the large, like condos, I bring my open trailer. I have a seven by 14 open trailer. Um, I'll bring that with me and uh, I'll draw, throw all the debris in there. Um, so I touched last time on, um, well, I still have like, I keep all the, uh, you know, shovels and things keep grease and all that stuff. And like I said, I have my uh, Echo Pole Saw. That's the only thing Echo I own, but uh, the Pole Saws are pretty sick, man. I have two of them. Um, I love the Pole Saws. Um, so I keep always keep a rain jacket right there and, um, you know, typical shovels. And still have my pole scooper because I always scoop certain poles out at, at you know, residential houses. Um, so I, you know, I didn't really touch on this last time too much. Um, I ended up going back and getting a reel um, from, uh, you know, Northern Pole. Um, that way, um, you know, cause you saw last time in that other little quick video that I, it just had so much, um, just, just, it was just a mess with that everywhere. So, um, you know, how I did this was, you know, I, um, just went and got a deep cycle battery. I have it here. I have everything coming out of there, the case. Um, you can't run an inverter really far from the battery, so it has to be pretty close. So what I did was just went ahead and, and put it inside the trailer with a deep cycle battery. And I have a charger, and I take it out and charge it every day that I use it. It's no big deal because um, I have a handle on the battery. Um, and then what I did was um, a switch that comes with it. Um, so I just push this on right here. Um, you can see the little green light that powers on right there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just reach around here, and I'll turn the... Uh, Where's the little compressor handle? I'll turn this on and we're good to go. So uh, that's pretty, I mean, that's a pretty vital piece of equipment to have in a, in a landscape trailer, I, I personally think. So um, not everybody can do it, but I had the opportunity to do it. I found that, yeah, I found the compressor, you know, pretty cheap. It was brand new on Craigslist. And then I went and ordered the inverter and, you know, got that hose reel and everything. So I keep an air gun and all that stuff in here too. Um, so th that's something that's worked out and uh, I mean, I've already used it probably a couple of dozen times just in the last two months um, You know with tires going flat and things like that um, So uh, yeah, I just keep I, I move my backpack uh, sprayer under there um, and, and I love that uh, that sprayer right there. I've used the steel ones I've used a lot of them three or four different companies um, I got to tell you those in 11 years that has lasted the longest the steel ones are sweet and they're, they're kind of similar, but um, the steel ones always leak. And this one, this thing right here you're looking at is over two years old. And look how good it still looks. There's no leaks, there's no anything. Um, I, I, I like that one a lot. So uh, that's what I use for spraying weeds. Uh, so keep a jack in here, you know, the wire spool right there. Um, you know, I still have this in, you know, this little cage in here. I'm probably gonna end up changing that and, um, you know, putting something more metal. Um, and secure in there to put everything in it. Um, I keep, uh, you know, tons of Gatorade and, and water, and then I, I keep, you know, uh, you know, cooler up there. Um, and uh, I was going to add another shelf, but I don't think I'm going to end up adding that. So uh, I'm just going to leave this space open for some small shears, um, some handheld ones down there, a couple of those there. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to end up having that open spot right there and put a two or three position rack. Um, to you know add you know for a couple of pairs of shears um because like i said again i'll keep three weed eaters on this and then an edger on the bottom um and then i have a little hanger right here this actually never comes out um it's for the blowers so uh, you know everybody that uses the blowers they 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 know and they and let's touch on like standard again man like this is not too clean of a trailer like it's not too clean like 
you know what I do is like every time, like after about every three or four yards or if something's really nasty, I take a blower and I take two seconds and I blow off my equipment. And that keeps everything clean. Probably once or twice during the day, let me step down here. Once or twice during the day, I just take the blower and I just bounce it off of the V-nose and I just blow everything out. Um, that keeps grass and, and wet stuff, you know, off of the floor, which makes the floor last a lot longer. Um, I was going to paint it, but I decided not to because I'm going to end up expanding and getting another trailer. Like, I don't, I'm just going to leave them alone. So, um, you know, that way I'm not painting all the trailers for everything to look the same because I like everything to look the same. So, and then, you know, I don't want to paint it and then everything get dingy and then have to repaint it. So I'm just going to leave it like this. But yeah, man, um, you know, going back to this, um, the guys use the blowers, um, you know, Mark, everybody like knows and they're responsible for putting it back in the same spot. Um, that way, if anything happens to a blower, I know who used the blower. Um, when it's just me, I use this one all the time. I have this one, the tube that comes up, and it just wraps right in between those. It fits perfectly. Um, you know, I got those hangers, and they wrap back there behind that. Um, and then this one just simply wraps around here. Um, but like I said, everybody has their own blower that they use, and they put it back when they're done in the right spot. I don't let things just lay on the floor and all that stuff, and, you know... It, it, I have found because I used to be like, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and keep everything all clean all the time. It takes too much time. And I found that that's just not true. It, it doesn't really take any more time at all. Um, I ended up getting a nose spill. I watched Ambrose Ding on the on the um, sure can and I, and I was thinking about getting a sure can. But the only thing that I saw was a nightmare with that with the spout, how it folds down underneath everything. I just I see a nightmare with that man down the road. I, I see it leaking. The problem that I have with that is that i mean instead of like some siphoning system off the top they put it on the bottom and if that thing ever breaks um you have a major spill and that's just a nasty thing that i just really could care less to to ever get involved in so um i ended up getting uh you know the just the simple no spill cans um you know those things work killer so um again uh this is what i got going on and you know as i add some more stuff then i'll obviously you know update everything but um so just one little final look around. Uh, ladders, mowers, been sick. I mean, I wash these things about once every seven, eight weeks, maybe once every two months. I just take a brush and some water, some purple cleaner mixed in with some soap, um, and I just clean them down. It's And I mean, the thing is, like I said, man, like I've set a standard with the guys, and it's like if you don't keep this stuff nice, you don't keep it clean, one, you're going to pay for it, and then two, like I'll just go find somebody else to work with me, like, that's where I'm at now. I never used to be like that, man, but I'm just sick of it because we know how much this stuff costs, dude. At the end of the day, I mean, you know, it's up to us to take care of it. Nobody's going to take care of your stuff like you do, you know? Um, so, you know, for now it's, it's me on the trucks. And when I do go back to getting into another truck, I'm going to do an every other day thing on each truck. And that way everything stays nice. And, you know, as nice as it can be, man, you know, things break and, and stuff happens, you know, but I'm going to avoid everything I can not to have to buy a $500 blower every day and a $400 weed eater every day and all that stuff. So that's why I, you know, I've taken the, the time to organize everything this time and, you know, buy nice stuff and, and not junk and, you know, go the extra mile on racks and things like that. Um, so, you know, so far everything has uh, been working out. So um, there's no reason why, uh, you know, we can't keep things, you know, you know, nice or whatever. So anyway, um, I hope, uh, you know, some of this stuff helped out. And like I said, I'll end up doing a review on the blowers. Um, and there's really nothing to review on the rack, but the rack is sick. Um, just buy one and there's nothing to review on it. So, all right guys, well, uh, hope you guys have a good, uh, good week. Peace out.